designers. In this video, I'm going to recreate a full look of Sarah Sanderson from the movie Hocus Pocus 2 that's just been released by the Disney. And here are some photos that I'm going to be using as a reference. It's including cape, dress and the boots. Let's start by choosing the cape in the need to section. This is a template and I'm going to use a middle look. Just going to reduce opacity of the template a bit and I'm going to use this color fill tool simply by selecting the color I need and then I just hold it and drag it to the section of the template. Make sure that the opacity of the template is not too low because the tool won't recognize the borders to fill in. And this is just a quick way to start. You can do it by hand as well. And then I will use this round marker in a small size to fill in those gaps created by the outlines of the template. Okay, now it's time to create one more layer and I'm going to be coloring the lining of the cape. So I'm just going to choose a color and start filling in that surface. So I maybe will choose another color because I want it to stand out. And I remember on one of the pictures seeing some sort of a mustard, kind of like old gold type of color. So I'm just going to quickly find it. So I think this color works well, so I'll use a color picker and then I will drag the selected color onto the area and fill it in completely. Now step three, I created one more layer and I will start um, I will start illustrating the um, fabric of the cape and I give it the illusion of volume and drapery. So I have one more layer and I still have all of those gaps, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to work over it and eventually cover them. So I took a marker, a flat marker, and I'm going to take this kind of a small size and start creating these straight lines, mimicking the shadows that would be formed by the folds of the cape. You can as well use a straight line um, mode if you want. I'm just going to kind of freehand it. So I'll start with shadows and then I will as well use a lighter color to form highlights. So I prefer to keep the um, coloring part on top because I will then have the way of coloring the lining without disturbing the top layer. So now all I have to do is just simply erase the, um, the part that goes outside of my initial purple layer and then I will be able to mirror it to the other side. And it would make sense to actually merge these two layers and create one more layer to color the um, hooded part, the hood, as well with some volume and I will give it a outline to the entire piece. Just make it look more neat and finished. I created one more layer to add a color. 
I saw it on the original piece and I want to do it as well on my illustration. So I will create an outline and then I will have to make one more layer to um, give it some volume to make sure it stands out on top of the cape. So once I have carefully um, outlined it, I'm going to proceed with that on a new layer. I'm starting with some lights and just dragging the toggle to make a slow transition. I'm using a watercolor brush. And when it's done, I want to basically erase the part that goes outside of the outline. <clears throat> And I can see that now the color stands out on top of the cape and I can as well mirror it on the other side. Take scissors, select it and then press this middle option for mirror. Just gonna drag it to the other side, make sure it's symmetrical and press done. It looks well finished. I want to draw a single button on it to show that it's uh, it holds together with it. Just a very minimalistic approach. And just drop one circle of color, put a highlight and put a shadow and there I have a beautiful golden button. From here I'm just going to fix the outlines over here at the bottom to make it look more neat and once that's done I'm going to go back to the lining and add some shadows there. Let's add one more layer for the shadows and I will take a color close to black, somewhere like a very dark brown and use a watercolor brush to suggest some shadow. Remember this layer is under the purple one, so it's not going to cover it in any way. It will just cover the area inside and if some color is spilled outside of the cape, you can as well easily um, remove those edges. Okay, I can say that now it's done. Let's press done and it's saved to our library. So I'm going to create a puzzle look for a dress. So first I'm going to go to dresses section and choose a dress with a corset and a white skirt. This one. And I need sleeves as well or a suggestion of sleeves. So I'm going to go to this piece. I'm not going to actually need it, but it's going to be helpful for me to draw on top of it. So let's start on the first layer. I'm going to remove the side views and just focus on the front view. Reduce the opacity. And I will take a pencil, the black pencil of a small size, to start um, planning the design of the dress. Uh, I can mm, trace the template whenever I need it or add my own elements. So now one half of the drawing is done, I'm going to use scissors to copy it on the other side. Just make sure it, uh, to drag it next to the center and see um, where you can fix the drawing or add any details to the outline. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to create one more layer and drag it under the outline because I want the outline to always stay on top and visible. And I will start coloring the part of the dress on this new layer. I'm going to take a flat marker and select a color for that. Let's watch how it looks like. Okay, I'm going to need a bigger size of the marker. So I want the material to look slightly shiny, sort of like a satin sheen shine. And I'm going to be using a couple of colors and the technique of layering just straight lines to create a volume, almost sort of if you can imagine the cylinder um, that it has the light part and the shadow part and have a smooth transition between those shades. Alright, I, I can say that it looks quite good. I'm going to add one more layer because I want to add a pattern and I have in mind something of a red color and something that looks like an embroidery pattern. I'm going to pick this one and first I need to change its color. I'm going to make it this red purple color and I'm going to draw on top of this top but even if I um <coughs> even if I overlap it's fine because I can erase it since I'm working on a new layer I can edit this pattern without affecting or damaging the previous work and the idea for the top is not only to implement the pattern, is to make it have sort of beautiful um, embroidery effect with different colors. It could be stones or just different colors of um, different colors of embroidery, but I will show you how I'm going to do that. So you can see how after applying the pattern it looks like it has volume because of that um, <coughs> the background that we have created. So let's add one more layer right here and I will take a pen because I need a rather small detail. And choose some other colors like this turquoise and draw small circles. It could be multicolor threads or something else. I just want to create this small detail. I think it will add a fine touch to the illustration. And I will as well pick another colors, just create a couple of dots here and there. So all I needed was one finished part. Now I'm going to take scissors and multiply it to the side. So I'm adding the very last ones and after that, since it's on a separate layer, I can just take an eraser and delete everything that is outside of the front panel. I've added one more layer because the last thing that I want to fix are the edges. It's just to add that fine touch to the drawing is to 
fix everything, small details. So I'm going to treat the edge with a color, almost like a an edge. Um, and I'm just going to kind of cover those pencil drawings. So now I'm going to add one more layer. It's still under the outline. And I'm going to take the same purple color that I used for the pattern to create sleeves. And I imagine them to be a crochet sleeve, kind of like on the um, original piece that the uh, Sarah Jessica Parker is wearing. So I want to find a cobweb pattern. This one is uh, specifically nice and it's just going to work perfect for me. I'm going to color the entire sleeve, leaving the whites to be like bare skin. I want the neat, uh, needed part to look kind of thicker, so when I use the scissor and just apply it on the same spot, it looks thicker because it's two layers together. And now the result, I'm going to mirror on the other side. So adding a layer for the skirt, it's going to be uh, also under the outline I'm going to take an opaque crown marker and another shade of purple maybe I'll find the color that's going to work for it and start just um <coughs> to filling to fill it with color to find the main shape of the skirt Adding a layer now to start coloring the folds, adding the light and shadow. I'm going to be working with marker and just using the toggle to get the darker shades and the lighter ones. So I'm almost drawing from the side if you can see my hand because it's easier for me to, to draw horizontal lines than verticals for some reason. And I'm starting from the bottom dragging these wide stripes of a darker color and on top it looks like a mess but from top it's going to be more light and I will cover that eventually so I'm drawing from the opposite direction kind of like taking from up to down a thinner stripes of um, light so it perfects my top part that was messy and makes this kind of like triangular drapery. I'm going to use a couple more different values of the same red to get a lighter parts in the middle of these lights. And do the same with the other skirt that um, <clears throat> that surrounds it from the sides. That's it for the dress, I pressed on and now I'm going to work on the shoes. 
So I'm going to find a boot template. I like this one in the formal section. So let's keep this design template and remove the other views. And start by coloring it with a color drop tool. So I'm leaving template um, visible enough for the tool to recognize the borders and I will just pick a color for the shoe. I want it to be dark, but I don't I want it to be sort of um, complementing the other colors. So I took a slightly bluish gray. I think it's going to look lovely with the rest of the look and the stripes are going to be purple. So it's pretty much done. It's time to add one more layer to start fixing all the small parts. Let's see how it looks without the template. So the edges are still white. So that's why I'm going to need to take a pen and black color and start fixing those edges around the leather and around the, the lace part. If I was to keep the template visible, if I was just drawing this shoe on its own, I would probably leave these patterns on the template. But because I'm going to copy this drawing on another canvas uh, to make all the look put together, I'm going to actually draw on top of this pattern and I'm switching from the dash line to the circles to create this illusion. By the way, the circle line is made to make buttons, so it kind of goes in a straight line. That's why what I'm doing is to kind of um, making the small dashes, which creates individual circles and kind of eyeball the distances between them. Okay, I can say that the um, the background colors are all fixed. So I'm going to add one more layer and start adding the light and shadow on a separate layer using my background as a map on where to add lights and shadows. So I'm just going to really quickly use the marker and put some lights around and this way it's like super fast. All I need to do later is just pick an eraser and minding those areas that I've colored before to erase the slides on top to match the contour.
great now it's time to do the same for the leather part I created one more layer and I'm going to be using a watercolor brush with a lighter uh, values of the same color to create some light and highlights and shadows as well pretty much the same technique Pretty much it, I'm just going to add the last layer to fix the lace and the inner part of the shoe. Um, a little bit the heel, it's the only areas that I haven't touched. So I want to just add a little bit of care to them as well. And I can say that the illustration is going to be finished. Alright, so here's the idea. I'm going to save this illustration. And in order to unite them in the same look, I need the double of this illustration, except all the layers I'm, are going to be merged. I'm making the um, double of it because I still want to have that initial illustration with all the layers in case I want to get back to it. So, again, I'm duplicating each project. I'm going to have one with all layers merged and one with all layers separate. So the program saves the um, newer version to the front. So this is going to be all my last newest versions. Done. So these three are the ones that I'm going now to put on the same canvas. I'll start with the cape because it has most space around and open one more app just like that take scissor tool hold and drag it onto this canvas and I feel like I can't see well I'm just going to pull this slider and put it to the side it can cover the cape it's just going to look nicer because the pieces will look united and I'm going to take the shoe now and do the same thing. Just outline it with scissor, hold it and drag. You can see the small scissor circle that indicates that you're transferring the piece. I'm resizing it to look natural. And here's the final piece. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Happy Halloween and please like this video. And subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.